Oh, uh, welcome everyone. Today we're gonna create this background you, you see right here, a little neon background. And this is actually a technique that I wanna teach you guys that we've been using for videos like Detective Pikachu Noir and Paper Zelda and other videos as well. And this is just a few techniques that, uh, that we use to make a background really quick, very realistic, um, especially with the shading, and just like make it pop and make it look really three dimensional. And it's really easy and I'm gonna teach you. So let's get started. So let's start by creating a new file. Let's start with a 1920 by 1080, that's enough for now. And I downloaded two textures and I got them right here. I got the brick wall and I got this dirty ground looking thing. You can find textures yourself if you want to, just uh, type in uh, pavement texture and uh, I typed in pavement texture free and I got a really good one here. Let's say I want this one and I can download this. And uh, there we go, it's, it's loading in right now, and that's the one that I, uh, that I can use. It's, it's pretty big, make sure it's, uh, it's flat, it's nice, you don't want a perspective thing, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File, and then Place Embedded, and I'm gonna go to my Texture folder where I save all my things, I'm gonna import this brick wall, and there we go, that's a brick wall, and I'm gonna scale it up. And so make sure it is on there. Real good, there we go. Something like that, I think this is pretty good. I can always change it later. So I'm gonna press enter, there we go. And as you can see, there's a little little icon here. And that means it's a smart layer. And uh, smart layers, that means I can scale it all the way down, press enter, and then scale it all the way up again. And it will still be the same resolution. Meaning that I gotta do all sorts of stuff with it without actually breaking the pixels. That's really important. So make sure it's a smart object. All right, now let's do the second one. I'm gonna go file, place, embed it. And I'm gonna take that road. Now there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit actually, because I need, I need a little bit more room to do this. And I'm gonna place it down below something, somewhere over there. And I'm gonna press control T to actually start scaling it. Uh, again, it's a smart layer. Now I'm gonna scale this up first. I'm gonna press Alt and Shift to make sure it's nice and... Now as you can see, I can't move down and I need the bottom transfer handles and I can't. So I gotta do that, I gotta redo that. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. I'm gonna press Control T again. So let's do it again. And then at this point, I'm gonna press Control, Alt and Shift all of them, or Command Option Shift on a Mac. And then you can see this little cursor changing into like a white cursor and I'm gonna drag one of the corners. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna make this a little bit more three-dimensional. See that? Change that a little bit. I'm gonna, just pressing Control now, just until I'm happy. So I'm gonna press Enter, so I'm gonna zoom in again. And you can see that like that two dimensional image is now in like a three dimensional plane and that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So this already starts to look a little bit three dimensional, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a new layer right there. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna make ambient occlusion. So basically what ambient occlusion is, so the light bounces off walls and, and the floor, etc., but it doesn't get into the nooks and crannies. And you'll see a little bit of ambient occlusion at the places where it gets darker. Uh, if you look around you in, in like a room, you can see it in the corners. It's a little darker than on the walls, uh, on the open spaces. So uh, so go check that out. Uh, you can even see it like in between little things, like you're between your fingers. You can see like it's much darker here than in the other place. And that, that gives that, that, that sense of depth. So let's do that here as well. So I'm gonna grab a brush. I'm gonna grab a fairly big one. Let's uh, make it black actually. So fairly, th this, is, this is pretty big, right? This is fairly big. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press F5 or I'm gonna go to my brush settings and I'm gonna make sure the spacing is maxed out so I, I, I stop seeing the little balls. Just push it together. And at a certain point, I stop seeing that it's being balls. So don't press it all the way up here. So then the transparency becomes really hard to see. Now this is nice for a solid brush, but for a really soft brush, just make it as soft as possible. So, so this is where I stop seeing the little balls. So that's perfect. Well, this is, this is obviously way too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to like 10%. Opacity, 10%. So I'm gonna do it once and well, maybe twice. So I can also use my numpad right down on your keyboard if you have it. If you're working on a laptop, you might not have it, but I can press two for 20%, uh, five for 50%, eight, eight for 88%, etc., etc. et cetera. So right now I'm gonna just do 10. So I'm gonna press one. And I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller. It's 400 right now. So let's do it again. 
maybe maybe once more. So what I'm doing is I'm dragging the brush, but I'm holding shift. Let me let me put it on 100%. If I hold shift, you can see I make a straight line. You see that? I'm just gonna press straight line and click around and have lines like that. So that's what I want. I want a straight line. So I can make it a little smaller. Maybe I want 20% opacity. There we go. And then I keep going smaller and smaller. Right now you see the 100. There we go. Let's go even smaller. 50. And maybe a darker brush. 30. See, there we go. Not here, but right in the center of that little, little nook. Even smaller. There, there we go. I'm gonna go all the way down. There we go. This is really, really nice and dark. So it's really soft on this side and it's in the center, it's pretty dark. If it's too dark, I can always like go down a little bit, but I think this is pretty good. Let, let me just put it at 100%. So without and with. And with, it suddenly becomes a lot more three dimensional. So that's perfect. So with the wall finished, let's do the logo and let's create a neon sign. And we can do this with anything. You don't need the vector logo. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a layered PSD. This is the one. I'm gonna select these two layers because I, this is our logo. See, there's our two layers. I'm just gonna right click that and I'm gonna say duplicate layers. And right there, I'm just gonna say no duplicate it to the untitled one haven't saved it yet and then right there it's duplicated now let's scale that down a little bit because obviously that's way too big and i think this is good and that's perfect i can just merge them together with Control e it doesn't really matter what i do with it i'm just using this for the outline for now and so i'm just going to press Control e i'm going to Control click it there we go and you can see like i will grab the outline so what i want to do now is turn this into a path so i can actually add a stroke to it so with that Control click I can do this with anything I want I can make my own lines I can do anything I want uh, really but I'm gonna go to paths right there with that selection control click go to paths and then right there I can click create paths from selection right there so I'm gonna click that click and you can see that it made a path out of that selection and it will say work path right here I'm gonna double click that and give that a name so I can save it Double click it and I'm gonna say logo. I don't even need this anymore. So what I can do with this path. So this path has been selected under paths. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a completely new layer. There we go. And I'm gonna grab my brush. And as you can see right now, that brush is still the soft brush that I use for the aim and inclusion. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna click this real quick. I'm gonna increase the hardness to 100%. See if I'm happy with it. Well, it's still transparent. So I'm gonna grab this and make it go back to 100. Let's see if this is good. Yes. And these are gonna be the thickness of my neon bars. And well, that's still a little too much. So let's uh, scale it down a little bit. There we go to uh, about uh, 10. I can also do this with my bracket keys. There we go. I'm gonna just see if I can find the right thickness for that neon. I think eight seems about right. So with that path selected, make sure it's selected. Otherwise it's gonna be invisible. I'm gonna go grab my brush. You need to have your brush selected to do this. There we go. And then I'm not gonna click this one. This is gonna be the solid. And I'm gonna click this stroke path with brush. There we go. So now I don't need this logo anymore. You can see it is, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. It's black. We're gonna change that real soon. And I'm gonna name this layer logo. Again, don't need this anymore, but I can save it for later if I decide to use it anyway. All right, so now let's do the blend modes. Let's actually turn this into a neon sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click it and say blending options right there. Well, let's start with a color overlay to actually make it that, that uh, really bright purple that we want. Something like that, maybe a little bit more saturated. Something like that. I can tone down the opacity, make it a little bit darker. That might look good. And then let's do an inner glow. I think I'm gonna make that color white. Eh, maybe tone it down a little bit. Something like that. Quite bright, actually. And now let's do the outer glow. And well, it already turned on purple. Well, let's tone that down a little bit. Tone down the spread. Uh, maybe up the spread. If I up the spread all the way, it's, it's more becoming more like a stroke. We don't want that. Let's do uh, quite, quite soft. Um, increase the size a little bit. It's starting to look pretty good. Obviously, it needs to have more depth. So we're gonna add a drop shadow because it's so close to the wall. Uh, you kind of have like a drop shadow. So let's do that as well. Let's add a drop shadow. So if I'm confused and I, I just wanna reset this, I'm just gonna just reset the default. There we go. Let's start over. And well, let's keep it really small because it's close to the wall. And then let's have that. I want it much darker. 
something like that something like that there we go you can also change that a little bit change the angle a little bit but i think this is pretty good let's fill around with these settings a little bit more until i'm happy i'm gonna drop shadow a little bit softer just fill around with it oh, i think i'm gonna keep it bright the outer glow maybe a little bit of a spread so it's a little bit more glowy this is pretty good maybe this a little lighter something like that just until you're happy all right so i think i'm happy with this uh, let's see how it looks against the other version yeah that's a lot darker but that's fine so one of the things that i want to do right now is actually make this scene more like a night scene so that glow makes more sense obviously during the day you won't see that glow pop up so much let's actually create like a vignette and i'm gonna grab my brush and i'm gonna make this into a more like a night scene i'm gonna turn this up a little bit i'm gonna make this bigger with my brackets a really big brush let's just go really big uh, obviously i need to make it soft so let's click that and go all the way soft and let me double check if the spacing is good and yes keep those balls as close as possible but we're not going to use the, the thick black brush to make the vignette we're going to do like a uh, 20. so i press the two on my numpad change it to 20 so it's nice and soft i'm going to zoom out a little bit because I, I need a little bit more room for my brush i'm just going to move around the light source uh, release and then do it once more and this is all according to taste right I'll make it really big and maybe i'm gonna go to like a 40 40 opacity there we go and you can see that it starts to get more three-dimensional when i do this you don't want to overdo it we don't want to go all the way black that's uh, that's wrong you want to see some details in the stones so something like that i think i'm happy yeah there we go and you can see without the vignette and with the vignette and with the vignette that's a really nice popping glow all right so let's create a puddle and a puddle sounds really complex but it's truly not in this case um, i'm gonna grab my lasso tool actually my polygonal lasso tool is a little easier and i got a new layer right there and i'm gonna fill that in there we go and i'm just gonna click around and i'm gonna keep those creases and edges from the tiles kind of follow those a little bit but not always because not all the tiles are always equally tilted so, so they're not really truly straight i'm gonna flow those over in a couple of places maybe go here a little bit something like that maybe overflow a little bit here make sure it's not too stiff something like that so you follow the edges of the tiles, but not everywhere. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Alt Backspace or Option Backspace. And if I do that, I will fill that part with just the foreground color. If I press Control or Command Backspace, I will do it with the background color. But I'm gonna press Alt Backspace. So now it's black. Well, that is already close because it's not reflecting a lot. And it basically should only reflect that really big neon sign. Maybe a little bit of the stone, the stone wall. But I'm not really happy with this yet. So I'm going to lock this layer real quick. And I'm going to call this a puddle. And I'm going to erase like a couple of edges. Obviously with a soft brush. Let me just grab a soft brush. There we go. Maybe with a um, 30 opacity. Just make this a little lighter. There we go the edges so it's a little bit see-through and yeah i'm pretty happy with that and i want this logo to reflect in that i'm gonna grab that logo drag it on top of the puddle so now i got two of them and i'm gonna control t move it down and move it in a way where i think it makes sense something around there gonna press enter so if i hold alt or option and i go between those layers i can go like i got the logo on top of the puddle and i can say like hey only use the alpha of that layer so i'm gonna click that there we go and now it's inside that puddle and i can still move it around and it will look like a reflection there we go it's inside you can see that i'm gonna close this down real quick there we go so it's even more clear it's a little arrow so alt click that and it will use that alpha there we go 
So that puddle looks pretty realistic. I don't need the wall anymore. I can see that. I don't need a reflection of the wall. I only need the really the bright parts and that's perfect for me. Now, will it, would it make sense that it's exactly this? No, I think this is uh, I think this is fine. Officially like the, the reflection would be somewhere here, I think, but uh, just for this image, let's put it straight on there and mirror it. There we go. All right, and there you have it. It looks pretty three-dimensional. Uh, I got the little puddle. I got everything going on. I got the vignette right there. I got the avian occlusion. Uh, just, just check out like how it looks without. That's super flat. And with the avian occlusion, that looks really good. And without the vignette and with the vignette. So in the next tutorial, we're actually going to animate this. And we're gonna change the Photoshop file a little bit to make that work. And we're going to animate this scene in After Effects and make it even more three-dimensional. See you there.